Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 110 of the Listening Time Podcast. Thank you all for listening. I hope your English learning is going great. Remember that if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker and you want to start reading fiction in English, you can purchase my ebook which is a collection of three short mystery stories written in English and translated into Spanish and Portuguese. So you can find those links in the episode description below this episode. So go check that out if you'd like. And if you'd like to support this podcast and you want to support me, uh, then please consider joining my membership and you'll also get exclusive content. And specifically, if you're interested in my advanced podcast episodes where I speak fast at normal speed, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member and you'll get two new advanced podcast episodes every month. So the link to sign up is in the episode description. That's patreon.com slash listening time. All right, in today's episode, we're going to talk about American culture. This is a topic that almost everyone is interested in. Uh, people like learning about other cultures. And since you're learning English, I imagine you're somewhat interested in this topic. So I'll talk about a few elements uh, regarding American culture in this episode. And I think that I'll probably do a part two because uh, I'll want to talk about some other elements as well because there are many things to talk about when it comes to American culture. So I don't know for sure, but I might make a part two episode um, if I need to. So uh, that should be a good topic uh, for today's episode. And remember that you have the transcript available so you can use it to follow along and help you understand everything that I'm saying. So go down and click on that if you need it. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with your friends or family members who are learning English. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about American culture. Uh, first of all, why is American culture so influential around the world? Uh, I'm sure that most of you regardless of where you're from, where you, where you live right now, uh, you've probably had some influence uh, from American culture or you know a little bit about American culture. And I think there are several reasons for this. Uh, one reason is, of course, uh, the U.S. is where we produce a lot of the really popular TV shows, movies, music, and entertainment. And so this gets uh, transmitted all around the world and people see um, American culture through this entertainment. So that's one reason why uh, American culture is influential around the world. And I think the fact that uh, in the U.S. we have um, a very important economy uh, and we have very important companies and things like that, that's also something that um, makes uh, our culture influential because uh, a lot of people uh, want to buy things from American companies or they want to invest in uh, the U.S. economy in different ways. And so um, there are plenty of other reasons as well, but I think that uh, those are a couple of the reasons why our culture is well-known and influential. 
And so let's talk about a few different elements of American culture. Uh, I picked four elements for this episode, so we'll talk about those today. Uh, the first element I want to talk about is competition. So in American culture, competition is a very important element. Um, it's something that influences a lot here. So, for example, let's talk about our economy. Traditionally speaking, the U.S. has had a free market. Um, this just means that there is very limited government interference in our markets. Nowadays, that's not exactly the case. Um, we have a lot more government influence in our markets, and this is something that many people uh, are not happy about because our economy is no longer what it used to be. It doesn't have uh, the exact same elements and structure that allowed uh, the country to succeed in the past. Um, we still have relatively free markets compared to some other countries, of course, um, but not quite as free as the past. Uh, but in a free market, in uh, this system of capitalism, competition is everything. In all honesty, competition is absolutely necessary. It's um, required in order for a free market capitalist system to run correctly because we need to have uh, competition among companies uh, that want to um, get more customers, more clients. And so they have to compete with one another to make better products or offer a better service uh, in order to um, offer something better overall and to uh, compete with each other to innovate as well. Uh, this is something that uh, is produced by competition here, is that companies or individuals or entrepreneurs um, are always trying to uh, discover uh, the next uh, solution to some problem, or they're trying to invent something that will solve uh, a problem or help push technology into the future. All of this depends on having competition. And in general, I would say that the U.S. has an achievement culture, I'll call it. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, I think that in the U.S., people really want to achieve great things. They want to um, uh, leave their mark on uh, this country or this world. In English, when we say that you leave your mark somewhere, this means that you do something significant and so uh, you uh, contributed to something greater and people remember you for this, for example. So people want to leave their mark um, before they die. They want to achieve great things. Uh, and this is a very um, natural desire in a lot of people here. So that can cause people to work really hard and compete with other people, right? We have that natural tendency. So uh, we're always... Uh, looking to do great things, to achieve things. Not everyone, of course, but a lot of people want to do this. And that leads to healthy competition. Sometimes uh, this level of competitiveness uh, can get a little bit out of hand. Uh, in English, when we say that something gets out of hand, this means that it gets out of control. So, of course, there can be a downside to having uh, this uh, level of competition 
in a culture uh, because it might make people more stressed or compare themselves with other people a lot. So that can definitely have some negative effects if you can't handle this in the right way. But I think if you can handle uh, this cultural element well, if you um, embrace competition, then it can be a very good thing for um, the country and for you and your achievements personally. Uh, by the way, the word embrace means that you accept and welcome something. Okay, so if you embrace competition, you accept this and you welcome this into your life. Okay, all right, the next element that I want to talk about is that uh, in a lot of ways, the U.S. can be an indirect culture. There are definitely some ways in which the U.S. Uh, has a lot of directness, that's for sure. But in some other ways, the U.S. is more indirect than most other countries. And the number one way in which the U.S. is an indirect culture is in its communication. So, uh, for example, it's much more common for people to ask questions in order to request something rather than give commands. So, for example, instead of saying, please do that for me, uh, what most people would say is, could you do that for me? Or could you please do that for me? So asking the question instead of commanding this uh, is a way to sound more polite. So there are many times when students of mine uh, give me commands. They'll say things like, please send that to me, please do this, please do that. And they add the word please, thinking that this makes the command sound polite. However, that's not always the case. In the US, we don't really like to hear commands that much. Uh, we prefer to hear the other person ask us a question to request that we do something. So it's usually better to say something like, could you plus the verb rather than please plus the verb, okay? In all honesty, the please doesn't always make it feel uh, really polite, right? It still sounds like a command and that can be a little bit direct in some situations. There are other situations in which we do give commands, but we definitely give fewer commands than a lot of other countries. Um, so uh, you need to get into this habit of asking questions to request things if you live in the US or if you interact with Americans. This will really help your communication. And the U.S. is also indirect in its communication, um, in its questions as well, because we tend to ask a lot of indirect questions instead of direct questions. For example, instead of saying, where is the bathroom? I might say, could you tell me where the bathroom is? Right? The question is indirect. I'm asking them, could you tell me? I'm not asking them, where is? So we don't always do this, but we do this really often, more so than in a lot of other countries. So as you can see, we tend to be pretty indirect in the way that we ask for things, in the way that we request things, etc. The next element that I want to talk about is that the U.S. is time-oriented. 
So what does this mean? Well, for example, you might have heard the phrase, time is money. Well, in the US, uh, many people uh, believe this to some extent. Um, we don't actually think that time is the same thing as money, but time is a very valuable resource, and some people would say that time is even more valuable than money. So they don't want to waste their time because that's like wasting money, or even worse. So a lot of people have this attitude when it comes to time, and so this pushes them to try to use their time very wisely, make the best of their time, and to do um, as many things as they can uh, with this resource. So of course, this can have a negative effect sometimes because it can cause more anxiety or stress um, because people feel like they don't have enough time or they can't waste any time. That can cause some stress because people are um, more conscious of how much time they have left uh, and that can um, maybe uh, draw their attention away from just enjoying the moment. Uh, so that can sometimes have a negative effect, but it can be positive in the sense that people manage their time well. They do a lot uh, with their time. And people are usually pretty punctual compared to other countries. Um, this just means that they arrive on time uh, to events or to um, appointments, things like that. There are some things um, that don't require you to arrive exactly on time. And uh, I'm not saying that Americans always arrive on time to every event. But when it comes to important appointments and things like that, people tend to arrive on time or sometimes a little bit early even. Uh, so if you go to some other countries where uh, people aren't as time oriented, um, this is much rarer. People uh, don't show up early to appointments or things like that. Um, so uh, this is something that uh, can be a positive in that sense that uh, people show up on time or they finish things on time. But for some people, they might not like this uh, so much. They might prefer to have less um, strictness when it comes to arriving on time. So I think it depends on your personality. And of course, because we're time oriented, uh, it's considered disrespectful to waste another person's time. It's like you're wasting their resources or even wasting their money. So, for example, if you're supposed to um, have an appointment uh, at 4 p.m. with somebody and you show up at 4.20 and you don't call ahead to apologize and tell them that you're going to be late, this is disrespectful in the U.S. By the way, we can use the phrase call ahead. This just means that you call in advance. You call before the time. So you should call ahead and tell the person you're going to be late. If you don't do this, it's a little bit disrespectful because you're wasting the other person's time. So um, this all shows how time-oriented the U.S. is. And one other element I wanted to mention is that the U.S. is very uh, individualistic. You probably already know this. Um, in the U.S., people 
tend to take care of themselves and rely less on other people. By the way, the word rely just means depend. So people uh, depend less on other people in general. This might mean that they depend less on their uh, family once they're an adult, for example. Uh, so I know in some countries it's uh, common for adults to still rely on their parents and they might um, still live at home uh, at a later age or they might still uh, need their parents uh, for many reasons. Um, in the U.S., traditionally, you uh, don't do that once you're an adult. However, nowadays, this is changing a lot. So nowadays, it's much more common for adults to still uh, need some help from their parents. Um, that's much more common than it was uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, for example. So that has changed a little bit, but in general, people still try to uh, take care of themselves uh, and people uh, really want to make their own decisions. So that's another element of this uh, individualism is that people want to uh, decide things for themselves, to forge their own path and to choose what they want to do. In English, if we say you forge your own path, this just means that you create your own way. So that's what people like to do in general here. And it's common for people to, uh, for example, live far from their extended family uh, once they become an adult and once they start their own family, that becomes their new family. I'm not saying that their parents and siblings aren't their family anymore. Of course not. But their priority is definitely their own family, their wife, their husband, their kids. So uh, that is definitely um, the priority. And uh, most people spend less time uh, with their extended family when they're an adult. Um, and that's something that I've noticed that is different in other countries where people still see their cousins and aunts and uncles and <laughs> all these people a lot when they're an adult. Uh, in the U.S., it's less common. And it's common to move far away from your parents or your siblings. That's really common uh, for people to have family members in different parts of the country, for example. So uh, people uh, are more individualistic. And uh, this goes with the idea of being free, right? Making your own decisions deciding your own future, things like that. Of course, there are some positives and there can be some negatives to this, as with all of these elements. All right, why don't we stop there for today? Uh, I might make another part uh, to this uh, so I can talk about some more cultural elements in the U.S. Hopefully you learned something from this episode and hopefully it was interesting for you. Remember that if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, you can purchase my ebook, my collection of three short mystery stories to practice your reading in English, and you have the translation to help you with that. So the links are in the episode description, and you can also join my membership if you want to support this podcast, uh, and if you want my exclusive training and specifically, if you want the advanced podcast episodes, then become a Listening Time family member. The link is in the episode description below the episode. And of course, you have the transcript there as well. 
And if you like this podcast, please share it with any friends or family members who are learning English. And please give it a five star rating and write a review. All right, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. Bye.